Hey, I'm Chris Narenby. I kind of just want to preface this video since I know it's called how to make bloomers. Well, this is more of a um, how to fail at making bloomers and end up with dumbass shorts instead because they are not bloomers. <laughs> if you want to make anything more resembling bloomers, you can actually just watch my making of Viking pants video and alter it to make it more into a bloomer shape or you can check the description. I have left some links to actual tutorials, which this is not. But if you're here to watch a human being slowly over time become more and more confused and actually turn into a struggle bug, then you can watch along this video. <laughs> if we start at the beginning and you might be thinking to yourself, what on earth are bloomers? Bloomers have long history that you can actually just look up on Wikipedia yourself. The bloomers that I'm going for are type of undergarment types of pants that kind of look like this and this and this and this and this. And they came around as like athletic pants type of a garment in 18th to 19th century. There's actually a lot of variations that you can buy in terms of bloomers and you can look it up on Amazon or Etsy or just kind of many other places, but uh, especially the type that I want to make. I firstly like to make things difficult for myself and number two, uh, I'm too cheap to order from Amazon because the <laughs> import and shipping cost to Iceland is just way too sky high for me to not at least try and make it myself. So. That's kind of what I started with and the reason why I'm making these bloomers for myself. I do have shorts that I use under most of my skirts and they are very comfortable, but I figured it would be nice to make something more, I don't know, period, historically accurate in terms of wearing something vintage-like. I started with this very, 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 very soft cotton duvet cover. This is something that I bought secondhand, so it was thrifted, as most of my sewing material is. And for me, when choosing the fabric for something like an undergarment, it is very important to choose something that is soft, especially if you don't want you don't want to make something that encourages shaving, chafing. And it's actually just nice to make it from something that you can wash at really high temperatures because this is this is not instead of undergarments but like this is this the second closest layer to your skin so you kind of want to be able to wash it at a high temperature keep it clean the duvet cover also has stripes so i know i'm not going to be using this for an outdoor garment because to me it's just not my style i think i would not turn this into a skirt or pants or anything like that maybe pajamas but then again i don't know i can just sleep in these pants that i'm making and because this is a duvet cover it's actually very nice i have a complete whole other side i just used kind of one of the sides that goes around the duvet cover so i have a complete other side left to make something else another thing that i really like about using cotton materials especially like duvet covers and such is that they are very easy to rip if you want to rip them. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, it's such a satisfying kind of ripping sound. It's just, mwah, I really like it. <laughs> As you can see here, I was very, very precise when I was measuring the length I like, and I believe everything kind of went to shit from this moment on because I decided that I wanted pockets and that kind of threw everything out of whack. Looking at the footage now, I don't even know what measurements I was going after. It was just kind of all very chaotic and, and strange. So I'm not gonna even list <laughs> the, the measurements that I was using uh, because you can definitely follow better tutorials elsewhere. I cut pockets for this and I even used the time to cut pockets for another project as well. So let's 
very good and um, sadly the pockets were the only thing working for this garment. They were working in terms of being pockets. Uh, the placement of them, however, is kind of awkward <laughs> because they're just basically leading into the crotch area and it's not ladylike and it's not good. <laughs> I did have the forethought of when I put in the pockets to leave uh, an area on top for a waistband that when <laughs> cutting for the crotch, uh, I realized I would have to cut down into what would become the waistband. So I cut that waistband part off and put that to the side while I finished the main garment. I tried to figure out the crotch and pant legs situation for an hour and a half, I think it was, and I was getting very frustrated, <laughs> very annoyed. I was cutting a lot and sewing and sewing it wrong and seam ripping and sewing it back together again wrong. <laughs> that was a um, good old time and, and when that starts to happen it's just time to step away from the sewing machine and scissors and do something else for a while. Since I was doing this in the evening I just put it aside for the rest of the evening and picked it up the next morning. I took some of the leftover fabric that I had not wasted on this mess already and measured <laughs> ish the length of the back side. I then cut like a semi fat pizza slice with the length from the crotch to the top of the butt. Very <laughs> precise wording here. I sewed the pizza slice looking thing in place, creating almost sort of a butt flap, but it was not flapping. So not really a butt flap, but kind of a butt embellishment. I then attached the waistband again without much problem, which was, I was so grateful for and that it went that well. I threaded the elastic through and kind of finished off the waistband. And then I hemmed the pant legs off camera and did some fringing touches. Do we want the reveal? Well. Let's have a look. Okay, so sometimes our sewing projects just don't work out and that's completely fine. And I absolutely know where I went wrong with this project and that was not measuring, not going off of anything, but thinking I had this in my head because I absolutely did not. And even though this didn't turn out as I wanted, I figured it would be a nice way to post this anyway, because I set out to do something and completely failed and that's completely fine. I learned a whole lot <laughs> doing this. Uh, not just in terms of sewing, but about myself as well, because I am still learning and making mistakes. It's just a part of the journey. And I kind of don't want to be such a chaotic hobgoblin of a, of a human. <laughs> if you're going to do something chaotic, at least make it with a fabric that is not like one of a kind or super expensive, um, because then maybe, understandably, you might be more <laughs> upset about it but sometimes it's just nice to do something and mess it up and learn from it and i actually finished these pants yesterday and i was so like Ugh, i hate them they're so bleh and i slept in them and <laughs> i'm wearing them now and have been wearing them all day actually and i really like them they're very nice and the thing with making something like this is nobody's gonna see them, so if they feel comfortable, it's actually just like wearing pajama shorts <laughs> under my skirt. So I'm actually very happy with how it turned out. They are ugly as hell and that's okay because I'm not gonna be showing them to anybody. I will have another hopefully more <laughs> successful video out later this week so if you're interested in seeing that you can hit that subscribe button but if you absolutely did not learn anything 
you can hit that thumbs down because I completely understand. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!